Uh, for those papers, the front pages uh, and inside the papers as well, with astrophysicist and space journalist, and we have to say dark matter expert, Sarah Crudders. <laughs> you got bored. Yeah. And David Wooding, political matter expert at The Sun on Sunday. Welcome to you both. Hello. Uh, thanks for being with us, of course, this Easter. Uh, let's take you through the front pages first with The Guardian uh, saying, don't blow your pension on a Lamborghini. Advice from the government minister uh, as those pension rules come into force tomorrow, of course. But a shortage of staff to give advice or guidance, perhaps we should say, about the reforms, according to the Daily Mail, <coughs> saying that fewer than 300 advisers have been hired so far by the government's pension wire service. You take care of the workers, we'll take care of the bosses. Apparently what a senior Conservative minister told a Liberal Democrat cabinet colleague, according to the front page of The Independent. The I also goes with that. Apparently uh, the comments made behind the scenes in the coalition discussions. Moving to the Times, they say Ed Miliband's facing a backlash from activists for signing up to the TV debates, which would allow minor parties to target Labour voters. Uh, are these two the voice of ordinary Britain, reality stars wading into the election debate on the Sun's front page? While the mirror goes with the rise of DIY dentistry, patients increasingly pulling out their own teeth rather than paying a dentist, it asserts. While fears of a new generation of superbugs makes the front of the Telegraph, 80,000 people in Britain could die in a single outbreak, according to an official government forecast they've seen. Daily Star celebrates the arrival of summer, even though it's still spring. Uh, they say temperatures will rocket to 21 degrees Celsius by the end of the week, higher than Australia. Same for its sister paper, The Express, which goes with old money, 70 Fahrenheit, saying the mini heat wave expected to last until the weekend. Not on our weather map yet, I have to say. Uh, the Financial Times, with plans being drawn up by a Russian billionaire to invest in telecoms firms in Europe and the US. So let's see what Sarah and David have made of that selection. Um, there's not too much on the election, but there is just enough to keep you busy, David, because um, they basically followed on from, of course, your scoop in The Sun on Sunday this morning about Ed Miliband and his performance on the Seb May debate. Uh, happy warrior or not, according to maybe his party activists? Yes, there's some disquiet about Ed taking part in this other debate, which is being billed as the also-rans debate, the, the, um, uh, the, min, the, the clash of the minnows, uh, because Oof. there's another debate going on with Ed Miliband and all the other candidates, UKIP, SNP, Welsh Nationalists and Greens, but no David Cameron and no Nick Clegg. And the disquiet is among would-be Labour MPs, the candidates standing, particularly those in Scotland, who are saying he's got everything to lose in this debate. He will be portrayed by the others as the austerity, austerity, austerity. austerity <laughs> candidate and as the establishment candidate, whereas the SNP and Plaid will all go out for him. Uh, and, and they'll be giving, giving a platform on equal billing uh, with him. Yes, and, so. and of course some of these people are... are, are, are fighting constituencies with narrow majorities where these candidates like UKIP and and, and uh, the SNP could could gain votes by yeah. doing well could in this debate. Could you not argue though the more publicity the better so at least he's going out there and I think what Ed's shown with the debates is that he is different to how he's perceived in the papers often so maybe you could argue the right reason for going and doing this is more people get to I see mean, it. That, that's the central question you know is the public getting more value for money by by seeing the tv debates are they learning more about the policies and of course the politicians i think it's i think when it was the smaller debates when you had the one with cameron and ed Miliband, it was I Although that wasn't more. truly a debate. No, so, not yeah, a debate yeah, where yeah. you had, well, Paxman, yeah, I think yeah. Paxman was the only winner really there. But um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you had more of a chance to see more about them. Certainly with Ed Miliband, who was different to how he's perceived a lot in the papers. So I think with that, it was beneficial. With the seven, I don't think you really got to get a sense of anyone. Yeah. It was more like people just came in, said the party line and moved on. And you haven't got a chance to borrow down. You see, the difference here, sir, yeah. is that um, when Ed Miliband was... was on with David Cameron and Nick Clegg, he was able to uh, have a go at them and, and mm. shout them down and take them on yeah. and show himself as a. But he's going to be the platform. target with this one. And this one, he's going to be in with a bunch of smaller yeah. parties. And the other aspect of this, if we go to Sun Page Two, is of course the uh, now assessment that Nicola Sturgeon actually came out pretty well uh, from the Seb Way debate. And of course, she's a trained lawyer, so she's quite forensic about her. 
points yep. uh, that she picks she, up. She did very well in the first debate. In fact, um, we ran a story in the in the Sun on Sunday this morning saying that uh, that these smaller candidates, uh, the SNP applied, uh, the, the, say smaller com comparatively yeah, to the votes, to the big yeah. big the big parties. Um, we're going to gang up on Ed Miliband, and and we use the phrase "kill Mill." <laughs> They're all out to get him. And uh, but nevertheless, Nicola Sturgeon is saying here in this story in the Sun tomorrow that um, uh, she would get Ed Miliband into number 10, lock out David Cameron, even if he had the, um, the biggest party with the most number of seats. So really the election well, can be done then on... A question and about... he could do that. She could do that. Yeah, but then is that democracy as such? Yeah, because it's an election done on political well, deals and not on votes. Exactly. If, if you can't form a government, then the, per the, 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 the leader who can form a government has to go to the Queen. And if she is going to support... Uh, Ed Miliband, then he's the, un he's the only choice if that happens. The, the interesting point of the YouGov poll as well, which is another aspect of this story, is that 25% of Scottish people believe David Cameron would make the better PM. T compared with the 24, it's only one point, who think uh, Ed Miliband would be, which surprises me because I always believe that Conservatives were not very popular in Scotland. My head's hurting already. <laughs> Do anything with numbers yeah. as well. Page four, The Times. Narrow-minded drug companies forced to fund war on superbugs, um, being ordered, as it says, to plough their resources into fighting antibiotic-resistant superbugs, as senior government advisor has disclosed. Well, basically, I think a lot of the papers have picked up on this as well. They're saying, um, certainly here in The Times, they're saying 10 million deaths, or up to 10 million deaths by the year 2050 by super drugs, uh, super drugs, super bugs even. But I think the problem is with drug trials is that they don't happen overnight. So you can develop a drug, you can get it working, you can get it working in primates, mm. then you have clinical tests of humans and you have more testing, more testing, it takes time. So there is this potential time bomb that, you know, diseases are becoming resistant to yeah. certain strains so that by investing more and actually getting those trials out faster and quicker you've got the potential to actually start beating these superbugs and to develop the way that we use medicine. Yeah well it's on the front of the telegraph as well I mean they've got a figure there from the, the government. But you can do expert. anything with numbers you can well, this change is the thing, and manipulate. I mean, is, is this responsible because a lot of people will be rather worried about this thinking you know well what do I do? do I, should I actually protect myself in some way or, you know? I think it's a bit of scare. It's the same with Ebola, though. Remember before Christmas, they were saying yeah. a million could have. And that's just almost like looking Swine at the worst flu, example. Yeah. avian flu, we've had all these things. Are the, the when you work are... out statistics, you can have any sort of extreme. You can just change a number, change the statistical formula and get a different answer. So, yes, drugs are becoming resistant. You know, MRSA's mentioned there and we do need to improve the drugs Which is we a, have. a super bug that's already yeah. Yeah, in hospitals. And drugs are becoming more, or bugs are becoming yeah. more and more resistant. Yeah. But I think sometimes with the numbers as headlines, it can be a bit misleading. Yeah, and, and alarming as well. Yeah. Uh, right, let's go. Uh, I don't know, we've been there before, so I need to reload and go to page 10. Uh, of the mail, and there it is. Energy drinks fueling pupils' bad behaviour. Um, and of course, we've got the, the teaching unions meeting at the moment. Uh, these are also caffeine heavy drinks, the, the so called energy drinks, I guess. Yes, yes, this is from the NAS UWT, which is the largest teachers, teaching union, at their annual conference, which, if I'm right, is in. Liverpool, or is it in Cardiff? Cardiff. Cardiff. Yeah. Cardiff. One's in Liverpool, one's <laughs> in Cardiff. The NUT yeah. are in Liverpool. Yeah, um, the, yeah the, the teachers are... Uh, Chris Creed, who's the General Secretary, is, is, is alarmed at the, uh, the, the number of disruptive pupils in the classrooms and saying that excessive drinking of these high-energy uh, 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 refreshments um, is, is, is to blame for it. Well, they're saying that some pupils are drinking two or three cans on their way to school. How can I mean, they afford two or three cans? That's like... Three yeah. quids and they're also very high in sugar one, as well, these things, yeah. aren't they? And taurine sugar as well. And which sugar is... and caffeine. We're so not we're, talking... we're, taurine, which is the chemical you have in Red Bull and Monster and other energy drinks like that, which is banned in certain countries. Is it so, really? Yeah. So what does that do? I think it's another sort of stimulant, stimulant. as well for the mind. And I think what right. they're saying here is basically children, if they're having more than just one and a half cans of Coke, that's over their caffeine levels for the day. Yeah. And, and as it says, some 500 ml energy drinks containing the equivalent of 20 teaspoons of sugar yeah. three times. That's why you need the home dentist. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> and they're being described as readily available legal highs. That's the phrase That's an interesting yeah. assessment, isn't and, it? Yeah, I mean, I don't drink these things. Uh, you, some, you know, sometimes you have a heavy day. You, you, I mean, you don't know what, you, what you're pumping into your yeah, body. Yeah, well, it's, it's reporting there a Danish study that charity is uh, citing more than 40% of energy drink consumers had insomnia and palpitations. Well, if you're going to drink... Why would you bother? 
I think certainly with clubbers and stuff like that, they're drinking it to keep away. Oh, I you see. Know, vodka, Red Bull, or vodka, or other energy I drinks. Wouldn't know. But, of course. Right, okay. <laughs> right. Fine, thank you for that in, insight. Um, but clearly, obviously, at some stage, I mean, the, uh, the, the government's going to have to start thinking about, you know, some kind of advice or. But then is it more telling people what to do? Telling people. The nanny stage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, don't drink the vodka. Uh, still to come, we'll be meeting the world's biggest Easter bunny, and he is big too. Is it four foot two inches high? It's a big lad. Yeah. More in a moment. Now, maybe it hasn't escaped your notice that it is Easter. Uh, to prove it, there's the Delhi Express with the Queen, with the. Um, I don't think they are Das, I think they're Narcissi, aren't they? Smaller version there in her uh, Easter. Posey with uh, the church service at Windsor um, and I think the weather people are saying that today was the hottest day of the year so far. But I didn't notice frost it. frost tomorrow as well. I think the problem is I used to do the weather actually with the BBC and I think the problem is when you forecast the weather and when obviously the Daily Express forecasts well, the weather. They just completely just, obsessed I think it could actually them. be an old copy it on front page From last year but yeah. it's difficult to <laughs> forecast the weather and so they're looking ahead to next week and obviously the next day forecast is about 75 to 80 percent accurate a full week ahead you haven't really got that much accuracy at all with the forecast so it's probably only 50 50 chance so of course if they put a story out saying it's going to be hot next week they could get it right but it doesn't mean they yeah. are going to write I mean, they, they talk they are obviously basing on a met office forecast of charlie powell basically saying uh, that we've got this blast of warm air, as they say, from the continent, or high pressure, which could bring... Yeah, but it's long-term, it's a week, so he says it could happen, but it might not. Because oh, the it's... temperatures could build yeah, to that by the end of the week. Weather's basically an example of chaos theory, which means you can never actually predict it. The way you forecast the weather is by looking at past weather patterns and modelling them based on right. the past weather patterns. So all they're saying is, in similar conditions, this has happened, so it may happen at the end of the week. OK, well, the sister paper uh, is... Uh, basically saying a gloom-busting heat wave will kick off the summer. And, of course, it's, it's spring still in meteorological and yep. in terms of... So. And hotter than which part of Australia? Because I imagine some parts of Australia are pretty warm still. Yeah, Have yeah. you ever noticed how newspapers always use, often use the Fahrenheit for the, for, well, for that, the warmth, yeah. 70 degrees. But when it gets winter, it's sub-zero. <laughs> it's never 32 degrees. Because 70 looks hotter than 20 yeah. degrees Celsius, I suppose. It's That's funny, the isn't thing, it? isn't it? Yeah. Um, but clearly, you know, we've, we've had a, a bit of a, a dismal sort of um, long uh, winter and uh, an indication that, you know... Yeah, we need cheering up. We need a bit of yeah. cheering it's up, a, don't It's a good Easter. Nice it's a, it's yeah. Easter weekend, not a lot happening. Um, should we just look, I think, yeah, well, if the fact Telegraph and... Times going exactly the same picture uh, of the Queen Edge to try and sort of uh, add a bit of Easter uh, <laughs> yeah. theme to it. But there is also another warning inside the Times on page four uh, about the sun not being too good for us. Uh, surgeon skin cancer blamed on package holiday boom. And this is indicating that this is a legacy of all those package holidays that came in in, what, late 60s, early 70s onwards. And basically what it's saying is they're seeing more older people now than ever before in the last 40 years, certainly, getting skin cancer. And that's because, as you say, more and more people have been able to afford to go on package holidays. They're no longer the preserve of the rich. You can get a package holiday for less than a holiday in the yeah. UK often. So, And because we're not as educated about the sun and sun safety, or certainly haven't been in the past, um, what they have seen is quite a rise in the number of people developing skin cancer who are older. And I'm sure it's something um, that was seen in Australia in the past before they became more skin savvy. And as we were saying earlier, like people used to put olive oil on themselves. Well, yeah, and, and I don't think, I mean, thinking back, you couldn't even buy um, sunscreen with sort of factor 15, 20, 30. I mean, it was about factor five, six, seven, eight was about the m most you could get in those yeah, days. Yeah, that so, sort of oily stuff you yeah, used to put on. Yeah. Uh, or a handkerchief with four knots in it. That was about the best <laughs> you had. Speak for yourself. <laughs> 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 you still got that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the, the, the question is now, you know, what can these people do to ameliorate that situation? I, mean, I guess the problem is if you've absorbed, effectively, that radiation all those years ago, there's nothing you can do. You've just got to be aware that at the first signs you get to I think it's, it is about awareness and it's about checking your skin out it's about looking for changes in moles and stuff like that and also diet I mean there's a lot of scientific evidence to prove mm. that diet eating certain fruits and vegetables can have preventative measures or can be yeah. Diet, yeah so I think diet is an important thing but of, the most important thing is to stay out the sun and it is to cover up and it is to use high factor yeah. sunscreen 
Right, Times page three. Meanwhile, the personal sunrise alarm wakes couples one at a time. Now, this is going to be very popular. A new popular. alarm clock. This is going to be very popular in the Wooding household, particularly with me coming in here, doing these late yeah. shifts and getting up early in the morning to go to work. Um, it's an alarm which targets the appropriate person in bed without waking up the other the How partner. on earth does that work? Well, it's like a, a smartphone app, and it's got a very concentrated beam. Now, the astrophysicist here Sarah, <laughs> will tell us whether I've got this right or not. So, so you I'll set you your it. alarm for the... <laughs> tell me if I've got this wrong. You set the alarm time to go off, and it has a light which beam which directs on the face of the person whose time it is to wake up, and the, and the sound waves go directly in a narrow sort of beam into your ear. Isn't there a you slight chink in this? And that is if you move from that spot. Well, it says it, whatever position <laughs> you're in, it can wake you. It's a fidgety sleeper. I think it follows turns. you or something. But what's, I'm going to twist this around to CERN, seeing as no newspaper is covering the fact that CERN is starting up again. And because you're using a smartphone, and we were trying to look at examples of how CERN has benefited everyday life, and quantum mechanics, which is something, which is basically the theory of the very, very small, don't look like that, that the world we live in, the fact we can have a a phone which could wake up and target you like an alarm clock is all because of quantum mechanics and our understanding of the science of the very, very small. And what's going on at CERN is to try and understand even higher levels of science that we can't even imagine yet, which will bring about technologies such as smartphones and stuff which were unimaginable 30 years ago. So that is how I'm twisting it around to CERN. Don't look so confused. Right, so <laughs> all, all, all this work and all this <laughs> money at CERN is, is basically to get an even smarter no, phone in 30 years' time. It's to push the boundaries of knowledge. Get, just on CERN, and um, it is interesting, actually, that none of the papers have actually touched it at all, it seems, um, because it's been fired up after, what, two years of... Two are years they, are of they being, tuning it up or, or...? They're making it more powerful, so basically it's now going to become the most powerful ever it's ever been Atom able to be. Atom smasher. Yes, right. um, so until we build another one even bigger, um, this is what we've got until at least the year 2035, so they've had to put it to sleep for two years to improve the strength of it, and now they've started it up today, so maybe that's one of the reasons papers haven't got it in in the news for tomorrow, but it won't actually start doing experiments until oh, June. Oh, right, OK, so you've got to get it up to speed, yeah, get some steam Hunting boiler. for dark matter yeah. and dark energy. And, and that is the holy grail of molecular science, is it? Particle you, physics. Particle, <laughs> because you can't see it. And that is, is that what's well, so intriguing? It's the invisible glue that holds all the other particles together. The thing or? is, we know so little about the universe. Right. We know so... And you think of how think science has changed over the last 100 years, and basically, um, we only... 25% of everything that you can see... Well, basically, 75% of the universe we can't even see. So all the galaxies, all the stars, they all make up 25% of the universe. So there's all this stuff out there, dark energy and dark matter, which our brains can't comprehend. Which is it's, why some people say there could be more than one universe? Why there could be more than one universe, why there could be multi-dimensions, all these things which sound like science fiction. Um, but we're kind of like taking that next step and trying to push down the boundaries. So we're trying to understand more about why we exist, what else could exist out there. So it is incredibly complicated, but all we need to know is that by doing something like that, we're pushing right. the boundaries of our knowledge. And, and just to, to get this out, <laughs> I mean, are you trying to discover dark matter? Are, well, basically, there, or are, will, will they actually be able to, to get dark matter? And if they do, what happens to... We can never discover it, but what happens with in CERN is you see the aftermath of one of these collisions. So what they're able to see from an aftermath right. is there might be some energy missing, there might be some momentum missing, and if they see that, that could potentially be dark matter. So Switzerland's not going to disappear down a big black hole? No, there hole has been fear of yeah. black holes, though. Oh, right, just added that way. <laughs> oh, by no, the way. No, yeah. there has been fear in the news. <laughs> oh, okay. But we won't. With all if the there was yeah. a black hole, we wouldn't know about it. Okay. It happened before. Um, right, as it's Easter, should we bring on the, the Easter bunny again? And what an Easter bunny. Uh, page three of the Express. Uh, this is Jeff and his giant... Four feet, four feet two inches, is that right? Talk Some? about dark matter, this is <laughs> fluffy matter. Four foot two inches. His dad, uh, who is called Darius, you can see him there beneath, is the biggest uh, rabbit in the world, in the Guinness Book of Records. Lives in the West Midlands with Annette there, Annette Edwards from Bromsgrove. And uh, his little boy, not so little boy, uh, is about to well, actually uh, Darius is get officially bigger. four feet four inches. Well, we should say it's not because this lady is is feeding them huge amount. It's because they are actually a continental a giant breed. 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 Can right. you put it on a lead and take it for a walk? 
Uh, I think it'll probably take you for a walk, actually, wouldn't it? So, I mean, right. I, I've got enough problems with rabbits in our garden eating everything. I mean, I, I, you it could probably get rabbit. your lawn cut with that, couldn't you? Just, that's you know, quite a good yeah, idea, a, though. Yeah, yeah, wind it up and let it go. And it is 2,000 carrots a year and 7, 000, 700 apples between them as well, so... Get two of them together, you get a little pony and trap. And it, its head <laughs> its head looks almost... You love this story, big, don't you? Its head bigger than, uh, than a net, than its owner's head. It's huge. <laughs> or is it because it's nearer? Nearer to the <laughs> camera. That. Anyway, thank you very much for your selection yeah. and joining us this Easter, and uh, have a great rest of the weekend. Let's see what the weather's got to uh, tell us on the weather front.